Miles Thrift. Hey guys, welcome to the Eagle Farm Preview and I have two very special guests. I've got GK who is uh, starting to become very famous in Queensland for being a uh, magnificent form analyst and uh, I love it when a guy sits in his office all day like you and I both do, GK, and just like uh, spit out the profit. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a good way to live. And uh, we've got um, the... Um, what, what do I do, Gord? The Eastern Seaboard Expert expert who does Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne right now, Aaron, uh, but also better known for providing brilliant information in Melbourne, guys, and you should definitely sign up for it because, um, look, I mean, Aaron's so generous with his information. Like, he's there trying to make a quid and packing them last week. He gave he, he tipped seven from seven winners. I, I don't like to say the word tip, Aaron, but I like to say suggested bets. You know, it's more... Um, they were suggested. You know what was funny about that, Gord? When I reviewed the meeting, uh, the last six won by no less than a length, uh, 13 lengths um, total. Oh, so you're giving yourself more money for that, are you? Oh, no. Come on. <laughs> my, my, my best bet was the one I tipped to you, was that Grinzinger Angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just and it was 2 30 out to $4 yeah, yeah, yeah. and it <laughs> fell in. And with yeah. that one, I thought, holy shit, what am I in for on this card? But yeah, it, it uh, ended up being a good night. Yeah, it was a good night. And uh, GK, how was last Saturday um, up in Brizzy? Yeah, it was interesting track. Um, they actually got off the rail and they were heading towards the middle. Like the inside lanes were were not good. Um, so it was rail half a metre last week. So they've moved it out to two and a half this week. Um, hopefully that deals with what we saw last week and we get a bit more of a fairer track. But Really, the last few weeks up here, there's been a number of tracks which um, provide betting angles, um, especially yeah. that Shemozel at the Gold Coast, which I'm going to talk about nonstop today. Yes, yeah. it's a great opportunity to bet on Saturday, isn't it, GK? Like, because there's Maybe. some lead in form there. So, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, the market has already moved for some of those horses that were in the right lane. And, yeah. you know, like I've seen a few different analyses on that track at the Gold Coast and most people had it as three to six lengths advantage being lanes one to two to outside. So yeah. it's just massive bias that if you can work out which horses to oppose and which to forgive, it's just there's a fortune to be made. I, I, I love it, GK, like when we review meetings and stuff like that, when I say, okay, well, you know, maybe I came out even or there was a small loss on the day, but I'm going to make money out of this meeting because the reason I lost was because of, you know, some bias that I didn't spot. That doesn't mean we can't take advantage of it uh, two weeks later, which um which is today. So let's get stuck into it. So um, optimal map positions, GK, what are you going for? Um, Look, I'm going to... Presume it's going to be fair again, and it's just going to be tempo related. We had a a meeting here about six weeks ago, and the rail was three meters, and we had a little bit of rain during the week, and it actually played really, really well. Um, so I'm thinking the same going in, and I'm just really looking at tempo to dictate where the ideal spot is. But you know, as per usual, I prefer to be you know in the the front half of the field. Up and in, up and That's in. It. Yeah, it's a def default position, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's find some winners. Um, let's have a look at uh, race one over the 1,200 metres. Um, so, uh, Aaron, I'll go to you first. What do you got here? That was a bit of a tricky race, but I do have the six compelling truth on top. Um, it, it's obviously flown at the 1,000 metres, gets back up to the 12, which I think at this stage of the prep should suit the horse. I think the map's okay. Um, it had some real issues there in that highway behind, uh, once again, my girl. It was wide, laid in. It did a few things wrong. Um, once again, my girl was flying at the time, and I think it's bled twice now, so it's. I think that horse is actually done, but... Uh, Going into that, uh, the horse was flying, and uh, the form lines, a few of these others are coming through, I think are really inferior to what it's coming through. So uh, at $5, I thought it was a bet. Yeah, it's interesting, because if you go off the bleeding the second time for its uh, subsequent performance, you'd say that the form out of that race isn't franked, that you're deciding to ignore that, are you? Uh, bleeding the second time, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a 
yeah, that's a that's a huge cross uh, for that horse. Uh, subsequent, uh, I don't think it was that time, was it? Or I might might be thinking of a different horse, but uh, yeah, no, I think the form lines are, are clearly franked. JK, what do you got? Yeah, it's interesting race. Um, I, I thought there's going to be decent enough tempo here, but I've I've landed more or less in line with the market. Like I thought the top four in the market just clearly were on top. Um, you know, they've all drawn well. So, you know, I was thinking Strapazi, Compelling Truth, Amathuba, Starry Eyes, I, they, were, they were the four that I just couldn't really escape. Um, I, I have Strapazi on top. Um, it's going really well, I think. Uh, last start was just a complete forgive, it was wide the trip. It was um, a day that it was it was really hot. The rail was seven metres. It was really hard to make ground. The inside was was favoured that day. So I'm prepared to give um, Strapazi another chance. The others, Amathuba, um, Starry Eyes, I couldn't really split. Um, Compelling Truth is definitely the, the interesting runner, bringing the different form. I wasn't completely convinced by the last run obviously the you know the the runs in the country over a thousand meters where it destroyed them like you know it's really nice what does that mean to... what does it mean yeah exactly i was just like what is what is this so mm. um i thought strapazi has maybe got a few more runs on the board in town but you know like in terms of a market like i had them <laughs> i had them at five dollars yeah. Uh, so I haven't bet yet. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Well, if you had them five dollars, then they're pretty much all bet. Well, and you and you'll take your little ten percent. I'm finding it hard to, like, so, I'm yeah. trying, finding hard to separate them. So yeah. I think I'm going to wait to hear about yard from Nick here, and then I might bracket two of them. Yeah, you just say these are the four chances. Let's wait yep. till Nick's information comes through, and which let's say he finds two of the four, then they're the two you back. Yep. It's a really simple solution, isn't it? Which is why everybody should sign up because Nick's mounting out information is <laughs> is absolutely sensational. He's so generous with his time. I think it's brilliant. And so, why isn't he here, GK? I think he's travelling. What to America again? Is. He makes What's so that? much money. He's just gallivanting around the world all the time. Is he? <laughs> I don't know, no? sunny coast or something. Too good. <laughs> sunny coast, well, that's not too far. Oh, you might need a passport, but yeah. <laughs> um, look, the two I went looking for, I think the obvious, you know, I, I, I tend to go looking for DF sometimes. I haven't I haven't finished it. Obviously, I haven't finished the whole meeting because I've had computer problems all day. But um, the two that are jumping off the page of me right now, and uh, I'm four from two. I'm saying the obvious lead up is the right lead up. Uh, but obviously, I haven't had the ability to finish the race. Uh, no, I, race. I, I think I think Nick's yard on the two is like really critical. Uh, how much improvement it's had because it was a long price there behind Avocado, which the four comes out of, and I thought it was a better run. So if it's had a lot of improvement from a wow, age, yeah, that could be a go. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to uh, race two over 1,600 metres. And uh, GK, map and um, betting position, please. Yeah, well, I guess I'll just start with um, market. I mean, like, I just thought this market's wrong. Um, so, you know, that's just a great starting point because it just... Oh, you love it, don't you? I, yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah. almost forced to bet. Like, I just... There's a lot of moving parts to this race. It's a little bit tricky to map, but I just thought... I'm against, when I did this, I'm just against the two favourites here because I'm $7 the field. Um, yeah. And I had both those around that price. So I thought that they were both unders personally. Um, I'm with Quoth Kwan. Um, came off a long break. Number two, yeah. Quoth Kwan, yeah. Um, came off a long break. It trialled really well. Um, and then it wins that, that maiden, you know, whatever, gets that out of the way. Um, and then it goes to a really strong class one where there's like a heap of form coming out of it, runs the, the best last 200 and one of the quickest of the day. And then, you know, from my notes, when I was reviewing that race, I just put flash and light run, good closing splits, went back from wide draw, wants Eagle Farm. Um, and then third up, it drew wide. And that was that same day where rail was seven metres, hard to make ground. Um the run, I thought, was maybe a little bit disappointing on face value, but they crawled. Um, 
So I'm prepared to give it another chance. Um, and what and are you saying about that, um, Jake? I think it's interesting. You, you resume over 12, then you go to 13, 50, then you go to 14. You're saying up in distance is a big tick on this yeah, occasion I, as well. So. I definitely um, think so. And, you know, that last run, you know, I guess if you just look at the video and you think, okay, maybe it's disappointing. But when you focus in on what else was in that race, pretty much – one of the other horses that got the exact same run as it there was Transatlantic, which came out last week and brained them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Congratulations for the loyalty shown by both Nick and GK. <laughs> and uh, I kicked it out of bed, but... Uh, oh, I had me. I... <laughs> oh, sorry, Aaron. Oh, I was on you, you do like a pat on the back, don't you, mate? Hey? <laughs> you always pink me for being loyal, but I got one back there for being <laughs> yeah, loyal. Yeah, yeah. Transatlantic going again. Yeah. And, uh, GK, any others of interest? Or uh, uh, Look, for me, I'm just happy to play Quoth Kwan each way at $11. I, I definitely am not saying that this horse has got the same ability as Transatlantic, but it doesn't have to. Um, I think it should be able to get into a decent spot here and... Hopefully it can finish off. And uh, just to comment on this uh, jockey, uh, Malloy, mate. Yeah. Um, I'd say I'm probably neutral there, like three kilo claimer, obviously. Um, neutral with the three off or does yeah, the three, with off, the three be- off? Yeah, with three off. Yeah, okay. So there's, yeah. there's worse three kilo claimers in Brisbane. <laughs> well, yes. yes. <laughs> what, what did Nick say the other day? TK um, or something like, um, you if, know, if, if, I guess, don't fall off. If, if, if you don't <laughs> fall off, you're a top 10 jockey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Through to the semis without breaking, breaking a set or something. Uh, uh, Aaron, uh, what have you got? Uh, I, I found this a really tricky race. Uh, I have seven as a bet, uh, which is the Lascari, which is around $11 or ten fifty at the moment. Uh, just seems a nice setup. Uh, the Newcastle run was better than market expectation. I thought it closed off really well. Uh, at Tamworth in a uh, Super Maiden, which is obviously a stronger maiden, uh, slow to begin, held up. Uh, the late sectionals were brilliant. Really suggested to me that 1600 was going to be a go. Issue is, it's drawn gate 15. And uh, there's not a lot of tempo in the race, um, but you know you get ten dollars to find out in a really sort of a, guys, yeah, a throw at the dart race. So I, I had it uh, as a bet. Guys, obviously I haven't done this meeting yet, but I've got gelded here as a gear change for the seven. Yeah. So what? It ran on the tenth of the third. It's been gelded. Oh, I highly doubt uh, that. That, yeah. that seems like a mistake, doesn't it? No. Well, it just seems like, obviously, all the I've, computer I've problems no I'm having are... Um, no, no gear change for me. I think somebody's cool. hacked me and stolen all my stuff. I've got gelded as well. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, isn't that weird? I don't, I don't have a gear change. So, so weird. Okay, sweet. So maybe, maybe I haven't been hacked. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I, I love what you say about two there, TK. Uh, and what, $10 to find out? Yeah. Yeah. Seems pretty easy. Uh, race three, 1,400 metres. Uh, what do you got, TK? Yeah, I like this race. Um, I found it a little hard to work out what the tempo is going to be, but with the size of the field, I thought that they'll probably um, get along um, at least a solid tempo. Um, look, I think the race is relatively straightforward. Um, I thought the two favourites really jump off the page here. Um, I guess with Brookhaven, pretty much inconclusive last start because it was running on the, the beach at the Gold Coast. So just forget it went around. Yeah. Um, my thinking with this is that months might have a race in mind early in the carnival. There's a few sort of easier races that they might be able to pick off with this horse. Um, I also think this horse is probably a miler um, and it improves the longer it sort of goes through the prep, like third up, fourth up, that might be the, the time. Um, so for me, that really puts me in the Ocean Czar camp. Um, the horse had issues last start. Um, and, again, it was wide on that track that I keep mentioning on the 2nd of March. Um, I'm hoping that they kick up sit midfield. Um, it's got a really nice turn of foot, and I think 
it can put these away. Definitely not declaring it, but um, I marked it three dollars, so I'm happy to play here. So, um, what uh, what percentage edge do you want off your assessed price uh, in order to get involved, mate? Uh, your mar- what's your margin of error? Is what I'm saying. So, usually, do, do I'm you do a market to plus ten percent. What's that? Plus ten percent? Yeah. Okay, uh, and you price at a hundred percent, yeah. Uh, I price usually 105 to 110. Oh, so you and Aaron do it the same way. I don't know yeah. why you guys don't price at 100. Oh, this always pisses me off. I do it to 102 <laughs> to 105. I don't understand people that do it to 90%. You miss so many bets. <laughs> Back yourself. <laughs> Fuck the market. I actually kind of like that, Aaron, as well. But, uh, yeah, it's actually funny because I know guys that do, like to do it 110, but you got to be flexible with that stuff because you got to know yeah. that your market isn't, you know, you're never going to be 100% right. Yeah. So I thought I thought actually pricing at 90% is nice because it gives you a margin of error. But uh, Yeah, uh, two bets a day. It's good. Well, if they both win, it's all right. Uh, race three, what do you got, Aaron? Uh I tend to agree. I really want it to be against Ocean's Are, but just given the issues that had their last start, track and trip, tick, uh, gate, map, it, it all looks right. Um, it's probably a fair price to play. I think it's the best horse in the race, and you right down the weights. Uh, the one I really wanted to find was the six uh, Tenzing. Then I watched the trials, and they were terrible. So I just couldn't be with it. So uh, I've got 15 on top in a low confidence play given the issues it had last start, but it's clearly the best horse in the race. Uh, and the thing, with, the the thing with Tenzing is uh, like with this stable, with Golan, like it's this is just like the Queensland version of Waller, right? Like they draw wide and they'll just they'll just snag back to last. Yeah, they, yeah. That, that's, yeah, no, that's just yeah, the strategy, troll. No, especially yeah. first up. This is a glorified barrier troll is what you're suggesting. Yeah, uh, say, saying that it is a horse of interest because it's definitely yeah. got the figure to win this race. Um, yeah, I, okay, yeah. I, well, my starting position was uh, Aaron. I was the same as you. I was going to try and be against Ocean Czar, and the more I interrogated every other horse, I just couldn't find anything. But uh, yeah. but but I, I do say yet again, like Yard from Tenzing. You know, um, yeah, we'll see. Interesting. We'll see. We'll see. But you're not being asked to take two fifty about. Oceans are like you were last start. You're getting 350 at the moment. Big difference. Yeah. yeah. Six to four to five to two. People don't realise what a massive monster difference. turn that is. Uh, race four, 1,000 metres. GK? Yeah, this is an interesting race. Um, our friends at Sportsbet um, put up some interesting What do you mean? Here. The shittest form yeah. analysts in Australia. No, no, no. no. GK's got another orders. sting here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Got the 34s was, about a three dollar winner once. There's uh, yeah, look, they put up a really interesting market here. Like they were very different. Um, so, Sportsbet as well as most of the other corporates, they actually put up Zuna as the favourite, which I just could not believe to be honest. Um, and I, it's starting to drift now, but it, it's just it's just one hundred percent a lay for me in this race. Wow, um, I couldn't believe that it went up five. I thought it was just pretty obvious that El Mozillo should be the starting point here, um, despite the barrier. Like, okay, if you look at the Queensland form, you go, mm, okay, interesting. And then the run in the Millennium was was nice. Like, it didn't have a lot of luck and, you know, finished. That's not a lights. strong race, but yeah. but it's still stronger than this. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's shown what it has, right? Um, so... Like, for me, it has to be the starting point in the race. Um, obviously, there's question marks from the barrier. Like, you don't win from out there over 1,000 metres at Eagle Farm very often. And the plan with this horse is they're going to go to the Percy Sykes. Um, so, you know, then there's a question of, okay. Well, it so- should be. If it's seven wide with no cover in this race, it still has to win if it's going to the Percy Sykes. You know what I mean? To have any chance down there. But exactly. uh, anyway, we'll see. Exactly. So I'm not surprised that the money's come for it. That, you know, I think Sportsbet went up $3.80 or $3.90 or something. Um, so there's, there's negatives, but... By the way, you know, yet again, Sportsbet are going to be top odds because of the emergencies. Yes. So, yes. yeah. So, you know, that makes sense. And 
I've taken the price and knowing there'll be deductions and just on the basis that I think it's probably better than these and it can sit three wide and probably still take care of them. And then the only other horse of interest for me here is Cosmos and Taurus. Trod really nicely last week. Um, the decision for me is just going to be, do I also have a bet on Cosmo, which will, again, be a, sort of determined by what Nick says in the yard. Um, I might lay Zuna, depending on what price we get to. Um, and I think I'll just ruminate on those two choices, but happy to play the race that way. Now, no opinion of Petticoat off that Newcastle run over the 900, mate? Um, check my notes. I like horses that have never been beaten. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing? Yeah, I wasn't taken with it. Okay. Aaron, what do you got? Um, I apologise. Uh, I was looking at uh, race eight and go. Uh, GK, did you mention Divine Force in this race? No, I didn't, but I was against it. Um, I didn't think that form is strong and I just like when I look at the the numbers out of those races I just I just don't think that that's competitive against Elmore Zillo and like what it's done so far okay off the back of that I'm going to say it's a good bet <laughs> I love it guys um, you got to have your own opinions it's fantastic so, yeah. um, I thought the way that the horses trialed Leading into its second preparation was far better than it led into its first preparation, unbeaten. And it also showed what I really love about like an early two-year-old. It showed that it can lead and it also showed that it could sit off a speed and really flash late. So um, it's, not, it's not an A grader, but it showed there's a glimpse of a bulletproof horse in that it can lead and uh, sit off a tempo. So I think the map works well, and I really love the way it trialled up there um, leading into its second prep uh, versus the way it trialled into an unbeaten first prep. So uh, I've got it clearly on top, and um, I'm happy to take the fill. Uh, is it five fifty six dollars Yeah, $5.50. Yeah. Uh, $6.50. Uh, yeah. $6.50, even better. I, I agree with you guys. Uh, I think the two up the top are the ones that um, are better. Um, I'm surprised you're so against the fine force, GK. It doesn't seem like your style. You know, we've only done a few shows together. But, um, for you to be saying negative sort of scares me. Am I missing something here? It does me as well because he likes oh. a lightly race winner. Yeah, I know. I know. That's so, why I'm a bit... Uh, I'm still yeah, but I'm just it, looking at the lines for it. Like, um, like, for me... Elmore Zilla is just an easy bet because I love the fact that it went down to the A grade stuff in Sydney. Sydney two year olds are just far superior than than Brisbane two year olds. And I love the line through its first ever career start against Barbie's sister. I think that's looking really good as well. So um Do you think the map is a potential problem for it? For yeah, Divine of Force? course it is. Yeah, Divine Force as well. And so more the map, the map's a problem, yeah. and there's also only been one winner out of both of its uh, yeah. first and second starts. Yeah, that's, that's what that's... that was sort of driving a lot of my thinking, as well as like the figures. I know that they could springboard off it, especially second prep, but I was a bit like, hmm, I don't know. But, yeah, well, I tell you, he's grade me up in Brisbane, one. and that's Nick. He just says, God, I never back a Mashani. They're baked rabbits. <laughs> he scares me all the time. They don't He's need actually to do that. ended my head. He's ended my head. Um, race five, thousand meters. JK, what do you got? Yeah, this is uh, another interesting um, affair here. Um, so, this is a race where we can really use the bias at the Gold Coast in our advantage here, I think. So, outweighed, I just have to be against. Um, Last start was on the rails and it fired to the lead in that race with Chinny Boom. And it was just massively advantaged by the buyers and the pattern. So on paper, it looks like A-grade form for this race. But I actually don't think it is what it appears. And we're getting pretty deep into the prep here for this horse. Um, like, I think it's I think It's, it's a big horse. call, GK. You know what I mean? Small margin Chinny Boom. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. looking rock star, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, get, taking that into account, um, for me, 
it just really pushes me into the Malibuum corner. Um, I like its trial, finishing alongside front page. I like the horse fresh. I guess the negatives for me here, um, which are really jumping out at me, are the gear changes. Yeah. Um, I noticed in the trial, like at first, they seemed like they wanted to teach it to take a sit. So I'm wondering if blinkers off might be part of this sort of strategy. But what's concerning me a little bit more is the tongue tie on. Um, there was nothing in the stewards' reports, but I, I wonder. Well, when you actually analyse the data of tongue tie on, it's not as bad as. I, I find it a negative purely because they've heard a noise, therefore they're putting a tongue tie on. But when you analyse the data, it's actually not. As bad yeah. as people realise, but yeah, anyway. I mean, like that that last ra- uh, run, um, you know, it led up against horses like she's an A-lister. <laughs> and, yeah, like they, they owned it in the end, right? Mm. But And then it, it sort of, it, the, the jockey said that it didn't let down like the last 200 or something. So I don't know, maybe they just thought, oh, we'll, we'll kick it out again and then come back. So, I mean, there's a few question marks there, obviously. Um but I just thought at four dollars for me, I would much prefer to be there than taking two dollars fifty outweighed, which I think had enormous advantages on one of the most biased tracks in Queensland. I can remember. And TK, there's going to be resistance in the market as well. You know what I mean? Like it's, um, and we love that. We've got to find a way to disagree with the market when we choose to. Uh, Aaron, what have you got? Oh, I really just like this race. I had the four on top as well, but um, outweighed Malaboom, uh, Hartoni, and Beachside Babe. They all seem like genuine thousand meter horses, and it seemed pretty hard to split them. The market seems to have found it pretty spot on. Uh, GK, the Gold Coast meeting there when it was a good four slash a beach ten. That seems like a really difficult meeting to review and put accurate assessments on. I absolutely love doing it. Anyway, Jeez, it's really hard to put accurate assessments on how much do you actually advantage or discount a horse in their lanes. It was dead set fence on fire, mate. It was. Absolute. But how, how much do you discount a horse on the rails and how much do you apply a horse that's in lane five? Yeah. Seems very you tough. Know, you know me, 50 lengths. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know what you think. I'm asking GK. I mean, like, for me, a lot of it, if we looked at some of those early sectionals, so, like, Outweighed was one of them, and then there was a couple of others late in the day. Like, they were doing, like, 11-2, multiple 11-2 sectionals around Man, the got back. mad late on in the day, GK. They were doing yeah. insane stuff, and they were still going. It was you just, you just couldn't crazy. Uh, so you know like the sectionals were just like if it was a fair track like they would have just been gobbled up on any normal track they would have lost by 10 lengths yeah mate like it was was absolutely crazy it was absolutely crazy like they were effectively the horses that were winning the the 1200 1400 meter races were 900 meter horses (laughs) (laughs) they just rode them like a 900 meter horse (laughs) Um, imagine if pride jenny was up there Oh, come on. Jeez. He, he loves giving himself a pat on the back. He, he never talks about You're the ones where he got to run. Jeez. Uh, by the way, DK, this is one of the best bets I've ever seen, this number four. I've only been doing it while I've been talking to you guys. Um, as I say, I'm behind. But, oh, my God, this stuff looks rock star, man. And I can't believe you didn't find it as well, Aaron, because that, that, way. that, uh, that Melbourne stuff is looking sensational. Are you talking about Malibu? Yeah, number four. Behind our Wow, those yeah. lines are sensational. And then I know that you've actually you had a massive negative jockey rating on on pin as well. Which means you should give even, even more of a tick for um Allman coming on. Blinkers off first time, tongue tie first time, at a thousand. Three eighty five when you're coming off A grade stuff against a bunch of Brisbane walkers to find out. No, no, it definitely I, can no, win, no. but I, it just seems like the market should be flatter for me. This horse should be six to four. And, like, outweigh, um, like, look at its form. Like, seriously, like, it's I've, most I've of got it's it sunshine on top. Yeah. I've got it on top. The market By the way, there's a roughie flatter. with some sort of a chance here, too. It's called North of Eli, a dun horse. Um, it's over 20 to one right now. Um, could be nothing, but um, uh, off peak figures, it could do something. I thought it was 1,001. 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, race six, another thousand meter race. GK, what do you got? Um, yeah, this is a, a nice little sprint race. This one, um, obviously, as you'd expect, there's there's a lot of tempo. Uh, Asamu, Hold On Honey, both want to lead, um, and they'll probably try to come across. But then there's Bring Me Cash, who will try to kick up as well. Um, it was one of the horses that ran like a 900-meter horse at the Gold Coast and just kept on going. Um, so for me, the shape of this race, it's really going to suit this emergency of POFUS, um, if it gets into this field. Um, this horse, it is built like a little tank. Um, it's just all muscle, real sprinter, has a really lethal last 600 on it. Um, if it gets in this field, I think it's going to be very, very hard to beat. Um, albeit it's probably getting close to rock bottom odds. Um, outside of Apophis, like most of the form is really heavily linked, like Asamu, Red Ruby, Hold On Honey, Nashira. They've, they've met each other like three or four times and there's been a few different winners. I think Hold On Honey, while it will be up on that hot tempo, it's probably the one that I'd want out of that lot. Um, the first up win was good, even though they crawled um, and it had a picnic in front. But I just have to take on Bring Me Cash. Like, again, that Gold Coast form in that lane, just sorry. And then Dolby form, like, you know, I've heard people in Brisbane up here telling me about how good the Dolby form's going, and I just roll my eyes. I'm sorry, uh, I'm just not accepting. <laughs> I'm not accepting that. So I just immediately have to be against. So at this stage, if a Pophis gets in this field, I'll be backing that, um, and I have a good bet on that. And then if it doesn't, then I'll just reassess once we see final fields and prices. Okay, so you're going to wait till final fields before you bet, or have you backed it already? Um. I haven't backed it yet, but I'm going to have a look at the prices. I'm sure Sportsbet's got a nice price up there right now, probably four yeah. or something. Four twenty. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, D ducks, D ducks, guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Aaron, what have you got? Uh, I didn't mind this race. I've got the the four Nishira on top. Um, track and trip is a plus, and I thought the trial. We spoke about this the other week with this camp. Uh, they seem to have a real intent about trying to win a trial and uh, going into first up runs with uh, serious intent and uh, trying to win the race. Gee, this, tra- this horse trial outstanding with uh, little to no riding. And it was a bit of a flashing light for me with this camp. And uh, just given what it did their last prep, and it is a genuine thousand metre horse. When I've got queries, GK's horse thirteen, definitely thousand metre horse. Uh, the two uh, hold on, honey, thousand metre horse. There's a couple of others where I've got queries about them being uh, genuine thousand metre horses. And this is first up at a thousand, coming off a hot trial uh, with a Really good previous prep, so you know, seven dollars fifty. Happy to play it. So, how did you? Obviously, Asamu won that trial, Aaron. So, um, give me a, um, a, a a chat about the like how you valued the Asamu and the Nishira against each other over that thousand meters. I, I thought Nishira was a better trial. Uh, it was little to no riding. It just slotted up on the outside and. Um, if he wanted to win that trial, he clearly would have. And this is the odd thing with this camp is they seem intent about pushing their horses out um, leading up to their first up runs. They didn't with this one, and it was trialling under its own steam. So for me, that's a flashing light. Well, that'll be another yard one because I, it's a definitely a horse of interest to me. Uh, well, saying I, that, I, yeah. I thought Asami was a better trial. So that was just... Really? Yeah, yeah I thought yeah. it was a better trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it, it's kind of interesting because I've gone against the obvious lead-up, which is the hold on honey stuff. I, I don't think that's a strong race. And I've gone against, you know, obviously the horses that got favours uh, at the Gold Coast. Saying that, GK, I mean, don't you think Mishali going back to the 1,000 upside off the first up run, we could maybe forgive it for being on the fence? Uh, I think yeah. there's an argument you could make there. I, um, I I watched that replay a number of times, and 
I thought it was in the right spot and it could have done better late where, you know, it was it was in that spot where it could have been in the fast lane and I there were things outside that were... Gonna- okay, this is your argument where you saw 900-metre horses winning over 1,300 metres. So even though this horse is definitely a 1,000-metre horse, you're not forgiving it because of its position in run, even though it ran over the 1,100 metres last start. That's your exactly. argument? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I love um, GK's tip down the bottom there, and I love um, – I'm going to call it a roughy, Aaron, because it's uh, it's uh, best available $8.50, mate. So I, I like both your selections there. And uh, Long shot. <laughs> that's a massive roughy. Jesus Christ, eh? Do you know, do you know that, you know, four to one gets you even money the place in the old ways? Anyway, that's uh, probably not – Probably people watching this show wouldn't even understand that, but anyway. Good. I, I, I told you, someone put me into this a long time ago. If you like something at $3 and it's paying $1.50 to place, he used to multi-school in there. He used to have 500 on the win, 500 on the place at threes and a dollar fifty. I said, why are you doing that? <laughs> he says, well, if it places, I get 75% of my money back and I think it'll win. Yeah. It's not the worst approach. It's not the worst approach, but you, you're obviously too young to understand the times that uh, I was involved in. Oh, I just missed out on actually, and that is like eight horse fields where it was each way odds. Each way odds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just like it was just like taking money for jam. It was just like insane. Uh, anyway, uh, race seven over the twelve hundred meters. Uh, GK, what do you got? Yeah, it's a good race. Um, so I think it's hard not to be at least somewhat impressed with the way Bubba's Boy or Bubba's Bay put them away last start. It was really dominant. But let's be real here. That was Wednesday in Brisbane. <laughs> so, you know, like I'm not getting carried away there. It's obviously in the mix, but I actually thought it's it's unders and there's been good support for it, but I've marked it $4 myself. Um, in terms of a map, it seems like Bubba and Tajaki probably go forward, sit in the lead. Um, and then I'm expecting Outlaw to kick up and probably box seat. I wasn't completely in love with the first up run from Outlaw when I saw it live. And then I've watched the replay a few times and I'm going to be a little bit forgiving because that was a very strange race. Um, there was no tempo and then they all fanned across the track And then the winner came up inside them all. So it was a bit of, it was just a strange kind of Brisbane race where the jockeys were just snoring really um, and Mm. fell asleep. So I've backed out, Lord. I think it's going to get a good run. I'm expecting it to improve second up. Um, I think Tajaki's the big threat here. Um, So for me, it's just a decision about whether I also have something Tajaki or I may also have something small, Ma Baby. It's going really well, this horse just hasn't had a lot of luck. So on Outlawed, then going to make a decision on whether I have something on Tajaki or something small, Ma Baby as well. Okay. Aaron? I really agree with GK, but I'm going the complete other way. That makes sense. Uh, number seven, Tajaki, I have clearly on top. Um I think this is a 1,200 to 1,300 metre horse. Uh, first up, it's 1,200. looks perfect. I think they just stretched it uh, beyond its limits there when they got to the 1,600 before the spell. Uh, the trial was fantastic. It wasn't asked for an effort. It was travelling beautifully. If it wanted to win the trial, it could have won by six lengths. And it draws really well in this map. And then I'm keen to take on the one, uh, Bubba's Bay, as... GK has mentioned the reasons why. Uh, the other one that you can definitely cover is the four, uh, Outlawed, which, you know... Oh, hold that... on, Aaron. It's not one of your favourite favorite, favorite uh, uh, bracket bets, is it? Is this one of the the famous Aaron bracket bets? We're bracketing. Go on. What's going to be... Six dollars and six dollars? Yeah, go on. We'll bracket it. Yeah, and, uh, and, and as far as your ratio is concerned, how would you handle it? Uh... It's... 65% Jarky, 35% Outlawed. 
Yeah, um, I love Tazaki in this race. I think it's an absolute uh, perfect race for it. But uh, I, li- I like my freshies against weak opposition when there's question marks about them getting PR previous starts. So uh, that's the, the go for me. Uh, race 8, 1,200 metres, TK? Yeah, it's an interesting race. Um, it's a good spin, this race, at present. Um I'm thinking that some of it may come out before Saturday as um, some of the control freaks are drawn wide. So that might sort of change the map a little bit. Um, Nonetheless, um, I did have Mullane as the starting point. Um, Again, it's that same race that Outlawed came out of. And again, that's just a forgive race for me. That was just like... It was just weird. So I'm just going to put a pen through that race and forget So you're going to go off SP? I mean, this was a $2.10 SP. Well, well I think, I think my lane is yeah. unders. Let me just say that. And I okay. haven't backed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So forgiving it. And I also think this horse might have jarred up. Like, that track was very firm. And I think this weekend will suit it better. There will be a little bit more give in the track. It's definitely going to suit my lane better. Um. But the one that I've actually backed early is Liberty Steps. Um, I backed it yesterday at eleven dollars. This trial was awesome, um, and I think its Melbourne form is going to stand up here. Um, okay, well, hold on a sec. Pause there, GK. We'll go to the Melbourne Pro because uh, he would have seen it, uh, Geelong. So, Aaron, is it a good type? What's the story with it? It was the first horse I went looking for, and I gave it none. <laughs> oh, you guys are disagreeing again. Butting heads. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, look, I thought the trial was great. It, um, it, its figures are huge. Yeah. And, um, yeah. It, it's definitely a chance. But so, I, but, I so Jake, it, it comes off that same trial at Doombin as that other lightly race horse that you're really keen on that won the trial, um, Apophis or whatever. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're saying that's going to be that eight forty meter there at Doomben is going to be like a pretty solid uh, trial form race. Yeah, I mean for a yeah. short course, like it was, it was. Yeah, those two, both their trials were awesome. I thought, like they were really nice. Yeah. So really happy with that. Um, I am against our Magnus. Um, it was in that same race at the lane, but it snuck up the inside, and I know Aaron's probably going to be with it. Um, that that track that day. It was rail seven metres and you just had to be inside. Like it was rails and run up the inside was the advantage part of the track. It just got the perfect situation there. So, yeah, it beat Mullane, but I thought it had all the advantages there. So I'm against it. Um, So for me, it's really I'm on Liberty Steps and it's just a case of if Mullane drifts, I might have something on that as well. Okay, Beauty, Aaron, uh, give us your lexin, but also give me a little bit of a comment on number 10, Rock Rib, because that comes off your uh, your area of expertise as well, mate. So uh, what do you got? Uh, what, a, what a fine judge GK is. I've got eight on top, our Magnus. <laughs> um, I thought it was the run of the race there in that Kanazawa race. I know it was held up in the right part of the track, but it probably wins a the race there if it's not uh, held up. And that was first up when this horse had a lot of issues. It's had six runs first up and only three second up runs. So you you got to suggest it doesn't get to the race as well. So for it to do that first up, uh, yeah, I, I, I sort of like it uh, given the price. Uh, I thought it was a far better run than uh, Mullane. And uh, you're clearly trying to find something to beat there. So I can understand. Liberty Steps... Um, the figures are astronomical when you compare it to this race. The form lines for me are really poor, and I'm oh, worried. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna disagree with the syndicates, Aaron. Oh, this is very I, interesting. I really worry about it first up here. Um, I think it's a good horse, but I worry about it first up. Uh, Rock ribbed. Um, it's a really interesting one. Um, I think it's probably as much as it's been beaten panels down the straight. Um, I think it's probably better suited our way of going. Any clockwise? Yeah. Your way is in Melbourne or your our yeah. way is in clockwise? Uh, our way, my way. Any clockwise. I thought the trial was pretty average, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, it, it goes well first up, but um, I don't think they gave it its fair chance there. Um, 
throwing it down the straight. And then it was 63 kilos against uh, What A Deal, which is a better horse than uh, the Sandown race sort of led on. And I think it pulled up with some issues and was tipped out. So I, it, personally, if I owned Rock Rip, I'd want to bring it back down to Melbourne and um, throw it around at Sandown or the Heat Track or something. Okay. It's, uh, it's uh, interesting. Might like the sun on its back. I don't have an opinion there. Um, who won uh, Bendigo Race 8? Uh, anyway, we're moving on to Race 9 over the 600 metres. I'll go to you first, GK. And um, Aaron, can you let me know who won Bendigo Base 8? Because my computer system's down, mate. So, yeah. Hey, Ophi. So, John um, Keating. Wow. Last race in Brisbane of late has been an absolute graveyard. Um, I think we've had three of the last four or five have been $25 plus. So yep. it's been a really great way to finish the day in Brisbane of late. And, of course, we get the Nemesis back. Um, they oh, back. no. Oh, come on, GK. Come on, mate. Stop throwing good money at bad. What are you doing? Okay, what do you got? <laughs> well, I think Daytona Bay is ridiculous unders so i'll start there uh, oh finally yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, mate. like it gets so much in its favor here but I, I actually i still think it's unders um like we again if we use that gold coast run um yes it worked early it had 60 kilos and then it had the other horse was cutting it up but it was in that tr- that fast lane for me which i just i, I can't accept this price um when it's going from what it did there to here, um, maybe I've just got PTSD, but I have to be against. Um, so I just think Look, it's a great situation to take it on. Yeah. I mean, it's found the right race, but it's just too short, given yeah. the the variables that you're suggesting there or, or the form that you're suggesting. So, yeah. so for me, I'm a little on the fence about whether perfect thought is going any good or not, but I just have to give it a chance here. Um, because if it is going all right, it's it will be in the finish in this race. It gets the map to suit, and it should just stalk Daytona Bay, and it should get its chance, I think. And the other one I'm not dropping off is Warari Falls, who total forgive, seven or eight wide at the Gold Coast. They crawled, had no chance, just forget that it even went around, and now it gets to 52 kilos, um, and it'll get a race with a bit more tempo here. So... Look, I think at this stage, I haven't bet yet, but I think I'm going to be on perfect thought and something smaller, Rari, and I'm definitely taking on Daytona. Okay, beautiful. Aaron, what do you got? Tell you what, people are going to think GK and I are enemies. <laughs> GK and I talk very regularly uh, through the week. Daytona Bay is a complete utter moral. Uh, it's the best bet on the card. Don't worry about if you've lost on it uh, the last few starts. The last of the Gold Coast, that was a good four slash beats nine. Don't worry about that form. Previous to that at Doombin, it got pestered in front by a thousand and one shot, which dropped out and ran last, and it clearly should have won that race. Uh, this horse is clearly best at a mile. It showed that when it was down here in Melbourne. I said that to Nick uh, when he was going to assess this horse first up. I said, it looks like a 1,200 metre horse. Just wait till it gets to a mile 1,800 metres. It's just perfect for this horse. Draws beautifully, and there's nothing in the race. Like, if it rocks up and it does anything close to the peak ratings it's capable of doing, it should blow this field away. The only reason it might start longer than it should is people are scarred from packing at its last few starts that (laughs) might have had one out of four collects. It's a good thing on Saturday. Back it. It'll win. Okay, sweet. Well, that sounds like we have a Monty there, and I have uh, one of the best ruffies I've ever seen in my whole life. We'll go around about 100 to 1 here, and it's a great bet. It's number three, Dark Dream, guys. Uh, Stick your hand in the cookie jar and have 100 each way on it at 100 to 1, and uh, if it loves in a place, you'll make a few thousand, and if it wins, you'll make teens of thousands. Uh, That run last started at Ramwick um, is is a lot better than people realise, and this we know this horse has the ability. It's got the figures to win this race. It was a long time ago. But, I mean, the last time it was at Eagle Farm, it actually did win, didn't it? So it's yeah. got the track and win last start as well. By the way, I don't need to talk too much more about a horse. That's, a 50-to-1 is best available right now, and there's a chance we get hundreds on the day. But um, 
what a great uh, cracking sort of like long shot bet. And uh, as you can tell with some of the suggested bets that I've made this afternoon, my computer system has broken down. <laughs> <laughs> so, because obviously they're not my normal stuff, and uh, let's just go head to again. head. GK and Aaron, uh, GK, which races are you going to bet Aaron a billion dollars that your horse will beat his horse? Uh, Apophis, yes, against whatever he was on there. Some yep. of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, look, you got to go in the last, DK. You got to go in the last, mate. Oh on. God, I really don't want to be on perfect thought. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Against Tate Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. not trust that horse. I, yeah, I, I just cannot take Daytona Bay at two dollars ten. Sorry, like. It's... So what have you priced it? So take me okay, on three dollars or something like I, that. I've priced you? Daytona Bay three dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you get to choose. You can choose two. Take Aaron off. Or three or four. It's probably a fair price. Mm. Mm. Oh, God. It's such a shit race. He's, he's, he's picked up for us when I've got Nishima. But, by the way, as you notice, guys, we, do, um, we don't actually talk before the show about what we're going to ask. It is done <laughs> random and spontaneously. So uh, that's why there's pauses involved here. Oh, look, um, uh, I just want to get away from that race nine as fast as I can. Like, yeah. I... I like Ocean's Art and uh, Apophis. They're the two primaries for me on the day. Beauty. Aaron, what are your best? I'll take both those on. Daytona Bay. <laughs> By the way, G GK and I get on very, very well. Probably comes across like we're... You don't need to excuse heads. yourself. Bloody hell. I, just, <laughs> I, I love fighting, guys. I, I love to see the fighting. It's just like you two newbies, you get nervous about having a fight. Newbies. I love it. <laughs> All right. Day Daytona Bay moral. There you go. There you go. Uh, good luck and good punning, guys. And thank you very much, GK, for subbing in for Nick. And uh, thanks, Aaron, for subbing in for GK. And uh, Nick is going to be back there doing the Mounting Yard Mail. And as you've noticed, it's going to be really important because um, there's a few first uppers that, well, I know I'm going to back if I get a lead from Nick. So it's going to be very important information for me. So uh, thanks, guys. Uh, good luck and good punting. Good luck, guys. Yes.